Good morning. It's plot day. We're going to harvest the corn plot this morning, which will be good to get that out of the way. So, Dad, he's fueling up the tractor. He's got one more big field of ripping to do that's ready right now. Um, one of the last big fields of bean stubbles, 70 some acres. So, uh, he's going to work on that this morning and should be done by mid afternoon, and then he'll come join our harvest operation. We do still have a couple more fields that need to be chiseled, a bean stubble or ripped. Um, they're the ones we harvested the last day we were doing beans there, and and then one of them at least, um, we're going to uh, hook the sunflower chisel back up and go down and do that because it's the small fields and the, the big ripper is just a little cumbersome for that. So, um, and then the other one, we're we haven't got the fertilizer spread on it yet. We're kind of debating and waiting. Uh, about maybe getting some more chicken litter spread there. So we're holding off on that one for now, and they're supposed to be spreading some more lime uh, on that field for us as well, I think. So uh, anyway, that's the, the ripper side of stuff. We got a corn plot to do this morning, and um, we gotta get some stuff around and ready to go, get the combine fired up. Might have to go get a truck, I don't know, I thought. Sales rep Tony's on his way, and uh, we'll get going here. All right. Tony's here. We got all our signs picked up. We went through and wrote down all of the entries and what they are. Make sure that it matches our records and just make sure everything's right. So we're, I think, ready to go fire the combine. Let's go. All right, so we're starting with the agronomic trials because it's easier to get to than the variety trial stuff. So we'll get to those. But these first ones right here, we actually have just three entries here. They're 16 rows a piece and they are a starter rate trial. So I looked at the stakes and we looked up the records and uh, we put 10 and a half gallons of my starter blend on these first 16 rows, seven gallons on the next and zero on the far one. So we're gonna harvest them 16 rows at a time. We'll see what the yield difference is. Um, but what I really expect to see here is a moisture content difference. I expect the higher starter rates to be a point or two drier for us and maybe a few bushel butter, but we'll see. All right, so we got our first entry done and we are pulled up to our grain cart. We are using our grain cart scales and this is one of the nice things about you harvest I'm going to say something nice about it for once. Um, but it uses this iPad so I can pull the iPad out of the tractor. I have to leave the key on in the tractor because it has to be connected to the ISO bus system. Um, but it creates the Wi-Fi network there and I can take this anywhere within the range of that Wi-Fi network and see the scale weights. And so we're going to change this to combine verify here when we're going to zero it. And then we can do that for every load and it'll keep track and we can just write down the weights right here from the combine cab and not have to actually stand out there and do that. So anyway, that's the the nice thing about this. Now they want me to upgrade to U-Harvest Pro, which eliminates the iPad and makes you do everything through the ISO screen and the tractor and would take this feature away. The one thing that I really like about U-Harvest and they want to take it away. Okay, the starter trials are done. Uh, hard to tell any results just from the raw weight data because you have to take moisture into account and stuff. And I expect to see moisture differences there, but it preliminarily would appear that maybe the, the lower rate of starter, not the zero, but the seven gallon rather than 10 and a half actually was better. Um, a little counterintuitive there, but we will see once we get the final results all tallied up. So now we move into this stuff in the back here. We're actually gonna move the grain cart, park it right in the middle here so that it's closer. Um, but the first one is our V5 fungicide trial. So this last strip here did not get any V5 fungicide. And then we have, I think three passes actually that did. We'll just harvest one of those. Uh, and then we get into my population trial and we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, next up here, we have our population trial. And if you didn't watch my plot tour, corn plot tour video back this summer, uh, go check that out for a good explanation of this. And I kind of showed the ears and stuff. Uh, but essentially what we did is we took my 210 day hybrids and can you see the hybrid variation here? Like, can you see how that one's standing really well? And this one, the tops are starting to break out of and it's every other strip. I, I don't know how well that shows up, but I can see it really, really well. Um, anyway. This hybrid that we're doing now has a really big flex ear and it. When you plant it at lower populations, the ear gets a lot bigger. When you plant it at super thick populations, the ear size shrinks down. 
That one next to us is the 10D21. That's the one we had up the irrigated field where we planted it super thick because no matter what population you plant, it's gonna put the same size ear on. And so the idea here is to say uh, how, how much does increasing the population help or hurt this 10L16 and how much does it help the 10D21 there and you know, is the 10D planted at super thick populations, which we're in a 42,000 planting rate right here, better than the 10L planted at 30,000 down there a little ways. So that's what we're gonna find out, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting. This is the 10D21 at 42,000. Look how well it's standing. I mean, that's just impressive compared to, <laughs> compared to that one. I mean, I know that's not on the ground where it's hard to pick up, but this one is really impressive from a stalk strength standpoint and plant health. Uh, it looks nice, bright, healthy. Yeah, looks good. We'll see what the yields do. I know you can't see real well, but we are down into the 30,000 populations and the ears here are just enormous. Big old ears on this 10L16 coming in, planted that low. But that's what it does. It flexes. It throws big ears at low populations. All right. Well, we got one more in our population trial before we get into variety trials there. But our grain cart's full. But there's a truck here, so that's good. I thought I was going to have to go get a truck. And I was trying to get these uh, population trials done, and then I was going to do it. But we aren't going to get another one on the cart. So I'm glad Phil's here to empty it. We'll do this one, and then... Uh, that next one is uh, 113 day corn, starts our variety trials, and we gotta work our way across there. I don't know, what do we got? 15 hybrids, something like that. All right, population study is done. We got our cart emptied. Now we're into the variety trials. We start with a 113 day here, 13Z50, that I don't plant on our farm, but I have sold a little bit of this. Um, the, you guys may remember like a little over a year ago, I did a video with one of the, my dairy customers that was chopping corn, and this was the hybrid that they chopped um, that they were really, really happy with. It, it, it did really well for them a year ago. So um, yeah, this is a good hybrid, but it's 113 day and it's pretty full season. This is a good looking hybrid. This is 12S75. This is one of the ones we had up in the irrigated field, the one that did better in my corn growers entry. I'd be curious to see what it does here, not underwater, but it looks really good. Big healthy plant type, I, I like that. The more I go through this stuff and see these at harvest, the ones that look really good at harvest and are standing well and have a bright leaf surface to them yet, they stand out to me. It's tall as well, this one is tall. We're making progress. We're down to the 109 day. And this one was really interesting because it had some massive ears, really girthy. This was one where we were finding 20 and 22s around. Uh, really impressive this summer. Time to put up or shut up time here, right? So we'll see what it does as we do the yield. You can only trust yield monitors so much in plots because the strips are, are what they are. But yeah, it's, it's yielding right up there, 280. 75. Oh, we're almost done. I knew this was going to take a while, and we've done pretty well, but it is 11.30. It's taken all morning, and it is what it is. So uh, we're down to the 100-day entry, and the other one there is a 99-day. Uh, there's These are standing really well. These were pretty impressive looking all year. The ear size is really nice. I just question the kernel depth and the size and stuff on this really early corn to see if it's going to keep up with the full season stuff. And there was a little spot up here with some coon damage in it. These are actually pretty good. A lot of times the early, uh, earliest flowering, not necessarily the earliest maturing, but the earliest flowering hybrid in a plot is always just enough ahead that the, the raccoons will come in and destroy it. Um, we didn't get that here, but there is a little spot. It's coming up right up here. Um, it is what it is. There's not much you can do about it. So we'll see. We'll see how they end up, but it definitely looks like our full season corns are going to be much, much better than our early corn. All right, this is the last strip here. Let's see how many rabbits come running out. I've been chasing two or three out every time. I'm not sure if it's the same ones or not. There's one over there. There goes one. There goes one. There goes one. There goes one. That's five I counted. <laughs> and there's one. Now they're taking off for the woods. There was one back by the woods earlier and there was a hawk trying to get it, 
Maybe the hawk will get one of these instead. They got nowhere to hide now. We did manage to get done and get everything in the uh, grain cart here. I'm hoping I can get it all on this truck and we're gonna go uh, get the truck unloaded, but we've got to test all of those samples. So uh, Tony was riding with me in the combine there and he pulled the sample out of the grain tank on every uh, hybrid entry and we have to go test them for moisture and test weight because the moisture content will affect the yield based on you know the weight. Just, we have to correct these to 15% moisture. So we are emptying the truck out there, just putting it in the wet bin right now. We have not started the dryer up because until we actually are shelling and getting bushels in, it'll just run out of corn. Um, shoot, forgot to push the button. But we are going through and testing. We took samples, like I said, of every one of those entries. And so we're uh, running them through the moisture tester now, getting moisture and test weight for them. And then uh, once we get that, we've got... Tony measured the length, so we've got the length of the plot, we've got the weight of the entry, we've got the moisture, and we can calculate yield from that. Um, stalling until this is done. Do do do. Just talk to yourselves for a second. There you go. 19.1, 55.2. Okay, I think when I left off, we were testing corn. Did that get there? Uh, we got those done. Tony's going to assemble the results and the data on that for me. I will post the results to my seed business website, link in the description, um, when I get them and I get time to do so. We have moved over to our next field here, and I'm going to start pecking away at it. Bill was uh, going to get the dryer fired up and making sure everything's good with some grain bin stuff. Um, this is just a small little 12 or 13 acre piece here. Let me show you the map. So this is the farm we're working on, but we've got this little field up here in the front, 12 or 13 acres that I can do without any help. I'm sure we're going to need the grain cart in the back for the long rows. So dad will be done chiseling here in a couple hours and he'll be around and he can help us with that. So, uh, but we're going to get this front one done in the meantime. So this corn does not look that great. And honestly, I don't expect it to be that great. Um, this is the same hybrid. <coughs> this is the same hybrid that we had on a different field that um, is the most disappointing I've had so far. Uh, I think this is a set of genetics that we'll never see our farm again, or any of my customers for that matter. We'll give it a shot here. We'll see how it is. There's actually two sets of genetics in the backfield there. We got two different hybrids back there, and we'll see how they compare. So, I don't know. I'd be thrilled if this makes 200 though. We're making progress. Got most of the front here done and I got the ends done in the back. We're, um, it's not great corn. 180, 181, which is kind of what I expected. I was hoping it would go too, but you know, the backfield should be a little bit better. Uh, some of this stuff in the back, especially back in here is really good dirt. The problem is there's a high clay knob that runs all the way across here and this whole side is, High ground, it's not as productive. It's just in the back and in the, in the back here, it drops off and is really good. So, I don't know. We'll see. All right, so we got the endros on the front done there. And we're going to go down into the back. And you can see we're setting, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but we're setting right on top of the ridge right now. It runs across that way towards those woods. And then it drops off, and there's some real good low ground in the back here. So, uh, interesting thing, you may remember one video this summer when I compared some of our early planted corn. This was planted on April 30th, and um, some late planted corn. That's the neighbor's corn there. That is not ours, but they planted that the first week of June. And there was a day when I came out and kind of looked at ours side by side with theirs. And I'm not saying theirs is bad corn, just that they had a long way to go at that time. Uh, I do know them guys, and I'll be real curious to talk to them after harvest to see what kind of a yield they got out there, but you can actually see some green in those stalks. Yeah, that's um, that's interesting. I wonder if it died from frost or if it actually black layered before the frost. I don't I don't know. But we're gonna see what ours is gonna do here. Right here it's good corn. Heck yeah, that's awesome. I'm a little concerned that this isn't gonna be great because the front field was like 184, but if if it does that I'll be happy. Um, I am fairly confident we're not going to be able to make rounds here. These rows are too long, so 
I'm going to peck away at it as much as we can, but we may go over and work in front of the woods where the roads are a lot shorter, and I might be able to make rounds over there. I talked to Dad a few minutes ago. He's got about an hour left of uh, chiseling in that field that he's in, and he'll be done, so should be here in an hour or just a little more, and then he can help us finish this. There's 46 acres in this field in the back here. It'd be awesome if we could get it done tonight. I don't know if we can do that or not. So we have jumped over to the west side of this field in front of the woods where I can make um, make the rounds because the rows are quite a bit shorter. And um, we have a different hybrid over here. So I have this hybrid planting map. We have one over here, this uh, 07G. This is the hybrid that we've had our silk balling and issues and was really disappointing in another field. We'll see how it does here. It doesn't look so bad, but we'll see. And then we have a new 106 day that we're trying, this 06A27, um, that honestly i've been told is not that great and that people are not super impressed with it um i am i'm i am fairly impressed with it especially if um what it's doing now holds because this is the high ground this is not the super productive ground that's back over in that corner and um yeah i i, I don't know we'll see but like the the the, the round here is averaging 230 to 40 ish like yeah that's okay we'll take that if, if i can get 106 day corn to do that that'd be great i need a good 106 day so this might this might work cart's full i'm gonna go ahead and empty it we've been having a little bit of issues with this tractor something about seat switch and pto not turning on because there's no operator presence something i don't know hasn't done it for me but it's done it for phil and apparently did it for brock so if i can empty it i'm gonna do it i don't know starts up just fine for me i'll have to tease them tell them they don't weigh enough to hold the seat switch down it's like when i was a kid and i needed to mow lawn but i didn't weigh enough set a chain on the seat and I'd sit on the chain so it would hold the seat switched out. Yeah. That kind of situation. Ah, there's a pickup here. That'd be dead. I have been demoted to green cart duty. That's okay. I like running this tractor. It is more fun in the combine, but yeah, it's okay. All right, he's going to break a hole in the middle so we can dump heading towards the truck rather than away from the truck, which will be good. Hopefully, he picks the right row. Huh. Something's not right there. We only have an eight-row head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh. All right, well, we've got these uh, short rows in front of the woods done here. We still got ends in this part, so we're gonna jump back over there. All of them except for those six there. We'll have to put our six row corn head on to do those six. So anyway, we're gonna follow dad over here to the east side of this field and uh, start working over there. So this is the field that we tiled last year. It was wheat stubble. We had a really nice clover stand out here, but we did not put chicken litter on this field. Um, but however, that, that clover is a really good cover crop that we've been doing more of. But anyway, we tiled it. So you can see all the tile lines in my background map here. Those are just flags. Um, basically, we, we mapped it after we put the tile in. We used the tractor with the ripper or the gator or something and drove over the tile lines making a flag layer. That's how we got them into this display. Um, but point being is that I can feel every one of them. So there's two that run along the, the side here, and now we're we're kind of driving over the laterals that um, they, they run on an angle like this. The main is just over here and runs that way. And uh, every one of them we kind of just dip over up and down them a little bit. I don't know if I hold this on the combine, you'll be able to see the combine hit them or not. And eh, not really. But I can sure feel them, so that's why this field is slated to get ripped with the 2730 Ripper. Uh, we don't do a ton of corn stalks with that, but a couple, two, three, four fields every year, depending on the weather and stuff. Uh, this one will get done when we're done with harvest. We are catching our trucks. So 
I didn't get the cart empty this time. Oh, our truck came back. That's good. Well, we're going to have a relatively full cart. It'll be enough to fill the truck, but I'm watching there in the uh, camera, and I'm watching right in front through that window that I cleaned the other day. And uh, I can use my buttons here to push the cart forward and back using our machine sink. And now I can see up there how full it's getting. So I can uh, fill the cart up fairly well. Not as easy from the, as from the combine, but good enough to get us done with this round anyway. Huh! Would you look at that? An eight row corn head can harvest six rows at a time. I guess we didn't need that six row corn head. Yeah, I can take Getting the our rest strip. around the edge of the woods and dump on the east side next, next load. Got it. Okay. The deer are getting a little bold. Those are just little guys. too much. There they go. The babies. Sunset pictures required. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, for real, that sunset. Vibrant red, orange. Very nice. Anyway, we're we're, we're almost done here. I don't know how much we've got left. Maybe 10 acres? Maybe? Ah, we can look that up. Let's look it up. Applications, work totals, shared totals. Six acres. 5.97. So we should get this done. Uh, we may need, we we'll definitely need another truck. Whether we can get it all on the truck that Phil just brought me and the grain cart remains to be seen. But we're going to get it done. Last one. Here on the last pass here. I think this corn was decent. It broke the 200 that I was hoping we would, so that is good. However, I told you guys earlier I had two different hybrids out here. There was a drastic difference between the two. As clear night and day difference as we ever see in a side-by-side -side kind of trial. So show you a yield map I will do so even if it's a screenshot off my phone but um, yeah it's quite interesting here is the <clears throat> yield map from that field and you can see on the left in the short rows there is the um, one hybrid and then there's a strip kind of right in the middle there as well um, big difference but if I pull this up and you look at the hybrids here right in the middle can see that the 06A was around 230, the 07G was around 204, so 25, 26 bushel difference between them there. That is significant. Dad's running the combine back to the farm, which is right there. We're just around the corner. We're going to leave the cart set here tonight because it does not need fuel. The combine does for where we're going next, and I'm going to grab this truck and we'll take it and call it a night. What time is it? Come on! My watch. Usually when I shake it, it comes on, but it's not, not going to. There we go. 8 o'clock, 7.56. So, uh, not a horribly late night. We'll see where we're at with the grain system stuff. Hopefully we can keep shelling tomorrow. Hopefully. But, we may have to transfer and or haul dry corn, at least in the morning. So, we'll see how it's going. Alright. I'm going home. I don't know what we're going to do in the morning. I tried talking about it, but it didn't go so well. So we'll worry about it in the morning. But we've got dry corn, or we still got too much. We still got to move corn. We don't have enough room for it all, so we've got to move it. So um, we'll make a plan in the morning, whether that's doing some trucking in the morning or setting up an auger to fill it in. I don't, I don't know, but we will figure it out. So thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Uh, as always, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, we'd appreciate it, and we'll, we'll see you again tomorrow for a ridiculous number of days in a row again.